Because you're chilling with Kenyo. What's up, you guys? You're chilling with Kenyo on the Chilling with Kenyo podcast. It's getting started right now, and we'll be right back after this um, brief message from this sponsor. What's up, you guys? Chilling with Kenyo is starting up. Okay, well, actually, it's not cruising with Kenyo, so I guess it should be more like a... I don't know what that was, but <laughs> that's an indoor hangout vibe, and um, it's because I'm indoors, I'm not driving around, and so this podcast I want to talk about, I feel like I want to talk about time management, you guys, I have some, a new time management, I mean, I, I have not a new time management, but I have a time management um, page on my website called Time Machine, you can go check that out, um, and it's kind of my journey through different things and it's infographics and different things that I use to prioritize time. But since I have Mr. Composition here with me, so go check out Time Machine. We're going to talk about that. But, I mean, let me, let me explain what that is. Um, time Machine is my way to be productive, you know. Um, I think one thing, I don't remember who said it, but I heard something about entrepreneurs being lazy. And it's like, they don't want to do work that doesn't need to be done. And that is mostly because there's profit in figuring out how to do less work and get um, a similar result or the same result or a better result or a better result from the same amount of time. That's also profitable. So um, I think we're all trying to figure out hacks. And for me, it's like everything, a lot of the things I've figured out is like when it comes to entrepreneurship has been related to my journal, my journey in in finding out how to make my time profitable, how to get more for less, which is one of my Kenya slogans, more for less. Um, but um, Time Machine is all about, you know, video. How does video make your time more efficient? Um, I have my weekly Kenya on there where I would record, and, and that taught me about how, oh, documenting your life um, can, can make every moment more productive and how do you change when your moments are more productive you know what what do you start to do um so that was part of that um and then infographics on you know what are the areas of focus what do i need to do with business is it social media is it engagements is it publishing ownership is it um whatever and it is it's all of those things and being able to look at those that helps helps make me more efficient that helps me get more out of my time because if i'm spending all of my time um being um, an observer, but I'm not curating at all, maybe I'm missing out on some of what I could be doing. I think about that for a lot of people. Um, You know, what made, we can talk about Downton Abbey for a second. You know, I wasn't going to talk about it, but I think this podcast is really actually about Downton Abbey because, you know, I've always been a fan of um, the the 16th century, um, Downton Abbey is not 16th century. It's it starts in like the 1900s. But I've always been a fan of 16th century British literature and British literature in general. Um, but definitely, um, Downton Abbey was pretty is 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 cool. And I think one thing that you notice is it's it's because it's it's a lifestyle um, documentary almost. She's Jane Austen, especially, she was documenting, you know, the lifestyles of the average person um, from the perspective of those people engaged in, you know, some of the most interesting aspects of that, you know, young people. And um, Downton Abbey, too, you know, what you notice is these people who are royalty are looked at for their lifestyles. Why? Because they can spend the most time testing out lifestyles, doing different things. They run away and get married to someone that they love instead of choosing the best option. They they have romantic notions. They have practical notions. They have gambling issues. They have all of these different issues that you only see um, at, in that period of time in a certain number of people because those are the people... So those people are observed and they're expected to elevate lifestyle and culture for the entire country, really. And so they're held to all of these lifestyle standards. Um, and anyway, so... I think becoming realizing that when you're living a life and you're in that that you're also creating a lifestyle and there's value from that and um, when you get into different areas of documentation and focus and prioritization and um, understanding you know how to use your own resources you can become a lifestyle leader and 
that's part of the work you're doing, so you should take credit for it. And um, I think that's what we do on social media, but it's about how we do that. What's the, the end goal? How does that fit into our larger vision for ourselves? And so that's what Time Machine is all about um, in attempting to break that down. Um, it's basically so you can see Kinyo Downton Abbey. Downton, Downton Kinyo. The Kinyo of... That is my... You know what? And a lot of it really is based off of the... You know, Sherlock Holmes, and funnily enough, another British... He had this thing called the Mind Mansion, I believe. And that's how he would organize his thoughts for efficiency. He would have this mansion in his head and he could go through the different rooms and the different doors and put stuff in different places. And that's how he would be able to organize his brain for high-level efficiency. Time machine is very much that for me. Think about what a time machine um, really is in, in this day and age. Um, and it's a lot of things. It's our phones. It's our technology. It's, it's our lifestyles. Anyway, so now that I've broken the ice, I have with me um, none other than workshop deliverer of the year when it comes to time management as ranked by the Carver Library's ranking system of the participants of the June 2018 workshop. Was that 2018? That was or 2019? 2018, yeah. June 2018 workshop, um, none other than the man himself, the myth, the legend, the conqueror, um, Kevin Prince, a.k.a. Mr. Composition, Mr. Composition, a.k.a. Kevin Prince, um, face mask out on all platforms. Huh. Time management. Time management. Oh, man. Uh, you know what? Let me just say it. it's an honor to be on this podcast. Um, we have so many dope stuff. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. Like, when it comes to time management and the process of the documentation and the, you know, when you bring up Sherlock Holmes and that, you know, that mind palace, it's just like I've had several... Uh, dreams where it's like, you know, this apartment, and it's just all like, I go through this apartment palace, and sometimes it's, you know, the dwelling. You think about dwelling, you think about the actual, like, they call it for a house, but then you have the dwelling of constantly being in the state of focusing on one thought, one thought or emotion or different things like that. So when I'm looking at time management, it's like your time management, your emotional management is going to dictate your time management. And so I look at, when you look at, well, one of the things I, I say within the time management um, is priorities. So when you get, when you look at it exactly, instead of trying to manage time and manage your priorities, your emotional self is going to be top priority as far as within that and funnel down into a lot of the other things because your emotional state, you can't, you cannot, you know, uh, take time and like reverse it or anything like that, but you can manipulate time. And your emotional state is going to allow you to be able to manipulate time because they always say the saying, oh, you know, time flies when you're having fun, you know. And so what is it that allows you to be in this particular state um, um, to be able to do the things that you need to do, that you need to accomplish? So that is your emotional state, you know. What is your emotional feeling um, to time like what like even if that's a question you know that your followers or people could ask it's just all like what is your emotional relationship with time and once you know your emotional relationship with time then you're going to be able to do some amazing things that is huge and you know what that is one of the biggest things because i think pe that is one of the the, the biggest downfalls, you know, the biggest things that people are doing incorrectly. They're always doing something too early, too late, one of the two, you know, and then there's regret from things you didn't do, which is regret itself is 
a misunderstanding of time. Because you'd be like, oh, I made a mistake. You can't make a mistake because you don't have a past. That's not what past was for. It wasn't for you to segment yourself. Whatever you have done can be undone. Now, what you're wanting is a little bit selfish. You're wanting to um, go back to a place where you willfully made a decision based off of who you were and how you thought things were, and you want to have some sort of extra knowledge. Yeah. You want to have your cake and eat it too. No, you got to be yourself. That's the win you get to take off of it. That's a huge win. And that's what you purchased in that moment. That's what you 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 chose. That's what you got. And, you know, because there was if there's a negative outcome, that's you information. That's you knowledge. That's to help you become better. And your unwillingness to take that information... And apply it to the day is completely natural. Um, which is why I'm not judging you. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't want to put any harshness on it. But I think, again, to, to go back to Downton Abbey, um, we learn so much from um, lifestyle. And we don't take enough time to um, think about lifestyle. And, you know, I think there's a lot of people who have whole careers of, as lifestylists that um, are using it. That's why, you know, influencers are so popular. So I, all YouTube, uh, entrepreneurship, hip-hop, um, a lot of, it's lifestylists. You're helping people design their lives. People don't know how to wake up. But now they get to wake up and be like, oh, I'm a gangster when I wake up and I'm going to watch this girl do this. Oh, she's doing it dope. I'm going to do that, too, and then I'm going to go to Starbucks because that's what my friends do on the Internet, and then I'm going to buy some. And the, you're not following. You're not a mindless follower. Those people have tried out a bunch of stuff, and they're showing you certain things, and then you're picking from what they've shown you, and so you're being able to style yourself off their styling. And so that's a lot of the, the, the currency that's that's available to us right now when it comes to taking control of our time anyway i'm gonna stop it there because i think that's a tidy little that's a that's a that's a nice little nugget you guys got to get a little mr composition feature we got to talk heavily about downton abbey which i am uh i just finished season four and so i'm gonna be polishing off seasons five and six because i think it's cool i watch all the british stuff i also watch um the Last Kingdom on Netflix. I watched the Medici. That's not British, but you know it's like European stuff. Uh, I didn't watch the Borgias because it was weird, and uh, and they started off with some incest, and that was not um, something that I was interested in. And um, what other shows am I watching? Oh, The King was really good. The King, uh, I think that was a new Netflix movie. That was really good. That was also British. But it's interesting to see, um, you know, royalty. And The Crown was also very good. Um, so it's interesting to see. I love I love these lifestyles. And, and also, another lifestyle thing that I'm into is I'm listening to The Nine Club a lot, which is a skateboarding um, podcast um, that I'm checking out a lot. Okay, Parisi, what what's some other stuff you're watching? Where are you getting your lifestyle? What what lifestyle stuff are you into? So I'm into tiny homes, container homes right now. Also, um, as far as lifestyle, I'm really into um, what entrepreneurs and creatives are doing as far as... Um, Do you, like, look for the videos of entrepreneurs? and What entrepreneurs are, like, performers, performance videos do you watch? What performance videos do you watch? So the performance videos, so I watch like, I watch like the, what, like for example, the Black Thought, uh, Tiny Desk Quarantine mm. uh, thing he did. I thought that that was super fascinating because as a rapper, it's like sometimes we think we need all the hoopla, you know, um, and literally our voice is our instrument. So it's just all like, you know, that is fascinating to me because that helps me to get comfortable um, with doing that myself. Um, on YouTube, uh, Living Tiny with the Bushes, 
tiny home uh, living. I've really been on that. Um, and honestly, just like uh, looking at the culture, especially with face masks, make sure to check out that single. Um, I've been looking at a lot of that. Space has been popping up a lot too. I've been, you know, um, yeah, basically right now it's like marketing, space, tiny living and um like quarantine performances mm. very cool very cool very cool very cool all right y'all um uh, go check out mr composition where can they find you what do you want them to check out right now oh man face mask you can check that out at mr composition.com or on all of your major streaming platforms Make sure to check that out. Also, every Saturday at 12 to 5, Texas CBD Fair Market Online. And make sure to get at the Composition Wellness Solutions. I have all, well, not all your CBD needs, but your smoking CBD needs, I got you. <laughs> awesome. You guys hit me up at www.kinyo.org. .org, not .com. All right. All right.